What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode in my Prime XPT Leverage Trading Education Series. Today, we're going to talk about stop losses and where to place them. Alright, I'm going to take a deep, in-depth look at them and I'm really going to help you guys understand how to place your stop losses. Alright, I know in this series I already made one stop loss video, which you should definitely check out. Uh, but we're really going to talk basic how to place a stop loss and why you place it where, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But if this is your first episode in my Prime XPT series, make sure you check it out, you guys. There's like risk management videos, calculating position sizes, um, you know, when you're leverage trading. I've got how to take profit. I've got that stop loss video, as I mentioned, and so much more. Also, if you want to check out Prime BXPT, there is a link below. You can get up to $7,000 bonus uh, on deposit bonus and BTC. So make sure you check that out. Um, I really appreciate your guys' support. And let's just get into this video, all right? So <clears throat> the biggest key, <laughs> we're going to clear out everything here. The biggest key for a stop loss, let's make this big. It's gonna be annoying because I'm gonna have to make it smaller next time I try to type in here when I'm doing it for my own charts. But anyway, the biggest key to stop losses and where to place them is, what if I just did that for like five minutes and you guys just sat here waiting for me? I'm just kidding, okay. Anyway, invalidation levels. Invalidation, okay. I'm a visual learner. Some people are visual learners, so this is going to help them. Stop loss below invalidation levels. You guys get it? Is that clear? Stop loss goes below invalidation levels. Okay? So, the reason you are getting stopped out all the time is because you're either A, going too big, too soon, all right? Or your B, not putting your stop loss below your invalidation. So let's just say, all right, for Bitcoin's sake, all right? Let's say that your invalidation for a trade, and this is just hypothetical, we're just gonna take this little wick here, and we're gonna say below this wick is your invalidation for this trade, okay? Now what happens is, look at this percentage. So let's say we're longing and our target's gonna be 34K, all right? Um, so let's just say you get this breakout, you get this hold, and we're going to enter here. And our invalidation is technically 5%, right? Okay, so this is a good risk to reward, as I've stated in some of my other videos, so make sure you check those out. But anyway, it's a great risk to reward, 5% risk, 13% um, reward. But the problem is, a lot of you guys, you go too big here, okay? You go too big, 5% risk. Let's say you go all in here. We don't want to risk 5% of our account on one trade, okay? Very rarely are we going to do that. So that's too big. So what happens here is it, you know, you get in and it goes up and you're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, I'm glad I went big. And then it breaks down. You're like, oh, I'm still good. It drops here and you just cut because you're like, this is a bearish daily close. All right, let's get rid of this. You're like, this is bearish. Look at this close. It's going to go straight down. I'm already down 4% on my position look i'm already down four percent this is a big position i gotta get the hell out of here so you close you're like what's an extra half percent it's gonna hit anyway and what happens it rebounds okay and you're actually back above uh break even now you're in profit okay um so you went too big all right and you didn't wait you didn't let your stop loss go to invalidation all right so how do, one way you can fix this right what do i do in this situation well one thing you can do is you could say, all right, well, ideally, I'd love to get in down here. I could do a large position with 2% risk, okay? But you're like, oh, it could break up first, okay? So what do I do here? Well, maybe I just put a small position in. And I say, okay, you know, I'm just going to do a small position here. 5% um, risk is a lot. So if I do a small position, it lowers my risk, okay? It drops and you're like, eh, my risk is low. I'm gonna let this run, and it bounces back up now, and then now you're back in the lead again, right? So, one thing you can also do is, let's say you do have your invalidation here, and if you do go small, you can say, wow, this is very close to my invalidation level, right? And if I enter a new position here, very close to my invalidation level, look at this, look at this risk to reward this gives me, because now my risk is a half percent, and my reward becomes, 
<laughs> so I went very small here. I'm in a great position here, and I could say, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna double down here. That first position was tiny. It's not very, down very much. I'm down less than a half percent of my portfolio or whatever, okay? And you could say, all right, well, I may as well just get into an extra position here. And then now, what, is, what does that do? That lowers my average cost, okay? So my average cost, when I entered this position, is right here because that's where I entered, right? Okay? But entering down here, same size, moves my average cost to half. So now, when it goes back up to this break-even level, I'm actually up 3% almost on that position now. Well, sorry, two, about 2%, okay? And if I don't feel too confident about it, I could say, you know what? My average position is here. I can either A, put my stop loss at break even now, B, I can take partial profit, leave my stop loss lower, and it's a risk free trade either way. Um, and you know, in these conditions, sometimes it's best just to play it safe. Uh, anyway, so, or maybe I say, okay, actually, you know, this is actually a resistance here. And I think we're going to go back down. Now, again, this is all hypothetical, you guys. But I think we're going to go back down. And I'm in profit here. I'm just going to go ahead and close. This ended up being a nice profitable trade. I made 2% on a, you know, a half-size position or whatever. It's a great profit. I'm good. I'm done. I can sit out now. All right? Uh, so that's one way to do it. Now, how do I figure out those invalidation levels? Right? That's kind of the key. So you need to understand chart patterns, candlestick patterns, how candlesticks invalidate. I do have some videos on this in my Bing X series, so um, those the Trading for Beginners series, so make sure you check that out too if you're struggling with candlestick patterns and whatnot. Um, but basically, let's zoom out here, all right? And let's go to right up here, okay? Because this is a trend reversal candle. I'm gonna zoom in on this. It's a trend reversal candle. So as soon as I see this candle, I'm gonna say, all right, I'm looking for the trend reverse, all right? So let's just say this candle closes and the next day I immediately just enter a trade, okay? Where's my invalidation? My validation is above this wick. If the candle closes above this wick, that would invalidate this trade idea. <clears throat> now technically it's two candles, but blah, 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 that gets kind of in depth and more into trading strategy. Um, but again, I do explain that in some of my other videos. Uh, but if you have a trend reversal candle, a candle close above that wick would technically invalidate that trade and it's like price is likely to go higher. So where's my invalidation level if I enter a short here right after this close, okay? Right here, all right? So I enter a short and price goes against me. I have good risk management. I'm not worried if it goes against me. You can see that this trade is never invalidated. I put my stop loss at an invalidation point, okay? Trade is never invalidated. It goes to my target. All right, and that's one of the biggest keys that people fail to do is to put their stop loss at an invalidation point. What a lot of times what they do is they enter a trade here and they go, okay, this is a reversal candle. It shouldn't go up very high and they get stopped out here, okay? And the, the trade was actually never invalidated. This reversal candle was never invalidated. So putting your stop loss too tight below that invalidation level is going to screw you more times than not. Okay, and that's the key that people misunderstand is they just put their stop loss where they want to keep their risk low rather than where the invalidation is at. So while keeping my stop loss where invalidation is at, sometimes I'm going to have to use a wider stop loss, right? Because it's going to depend on time frame. If I get this on a 15 minute chart, my stop loss is going to be able to be tighter than on a one day chart. So my position on a one day chart might be a little bit smaller than that position on the 15 minute chart with tighter risk, okay? Um, so that's one of the biggest things I see people do wrong is they go too big, they have a setup here, they read the setup, they know where the invalidation is, but they wanna go bigger. I know my invalidation's up here, I wanna go bigger, I'm gonna put a tighter stop loss, play it a little bit more risky, and I'm gonna get stopped out too often. So I need to understand the rules and restrictions of the charts, of the invalidations, and say, okay, look, this is my invalidation. Price can definitely go up higher there, okay? There's nothing telling me that price can go higher, and honestly, price could have wicked. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where are we going? Where are we going? Price could have wicked up here, closed back below, and it still would have been valid. 
So one thing I like to do is candle close confirmations for my stop losses. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. If you're still learning and still testing things out, you're gonna to wanna to do small positions, stop loss above invalidation, and go from there, and you'll start learning these type of things to be able to adjust and uh, you know make changes so you don't get stopped out so much in the future. But anyway, um, one thing you can do is you can say, okay, look, I'm gonna go half size here. If it goes higher, I can add. Or you could say, I'm gonna look at lower time frames. And lower time frames actually show we might go up a little bit higher. So then maybe instead of getting an entry down here, you get an entry up here a little bit higher on this wick, which you can see now that reduces my stop loss to 1.2% rather than 2.5% uh, if I get in right on the candle close. Okay, so that's one way to do that. Um, and the key here is we're putting stop losses above invalidation levels, okay, if I'm shorting. And I do have a, actually a video on how to short as well, and you would actually see a setup just like this, um, which basically nailed the top here at 48K. But anyway, um, so make sure you check out that video too. Uh, but anyway, so here's another good example where if you miss this top here and you get this breakdown, you say, okay, this was a top, this is a breakdown now, and I'm going to look for a retest to short. Okay, so you short here or here or wherever, and your invalidation level is gonna be a close, above for for most people for a lot of people it would be up here your invalidation wouldn't change and technically that's correct for me i do like tighter stop losses and i'm a little bit more uh particular about my entries and things like that so for me personally i would not like to see a close above here okay so my invalidation personally would be a candle close above this line or technically two candle closes, but once when I have one candle close, I kind of have to look at lower time frames and say, okay, how do my lower time frames look? Am I getting signals that I don't like, that I need to close this, or do I think this could end up being a fake out, yada, yada. Again, that's a little bit more in depth, but I do like to mention that just a little bit. Uh, but anyway, so my invalidation would be a candle close above here. A lot of people's invalidation would be a close above here because that would be a higher low, right? And again, I have videos for trends to help you figure out what higher lows are, lower highs, and how those make trends, okay? But anyway, so this is a high, and then you have a higher high here, and that would invalidate a lot of people's shorts, okay? So mine would be here. You can see that my short invalidation would never have been triggered, so I never would have closed here, um, but I do monitor closely if it gets into my level, and that's why I also you know, can't go extremely huge, big, and chase here, um, and why you have to wait for entries, because if you chase down here, all right, you just chase down here, your invalidation is 5% again. And that's what a lot of people get in trouble too is chasing, all right? Let's say that this is a great setup and your invalidation is here and this just nukes on this open. Let it nuke, right? And it actually did nuke and it rebounded. If you miss your entry, you don't chase it, you just find another entry, right? You just wait and maybe the setup is over and it just goes down. From here, it just goes straight down and you missed your trade. So what? Okay, go to a different chart, find a different chart, find the same setup somewhere else. Maybe you can find the exact same setup and it's lagging and maybe you find a chart that is right here and just did this and Bitcoin's already down here and you find something else that's like right up here and you can be like, oh, sweet, this is the exact same setup, great risk to reward, my invalidation is close, I'm gonna hop in on this, okay? So, another thing is patterns, all right? So the next and probably the last thing we'll talk about here uh, is patterns and basically putting your stop loss below the invalidation of a pattern, okay? Or below or above, depending on what it is, okay? So here, we actually have a really nice rising wedge and it was kind of a fake out, but we can look at this for what it is and say here's a rising, or sorry, a falling wedge, okay? It's a falling channel and technically, your target's just gonna be from top to bottom. Here, let me do it this way so it matches with the chart. Top to bottom. <laughs> top to bottom, yeah, that makes sense. Bottom to top, okay? And the breakout, your target's gonna be here. So just for technically, for this pattern, your target would be reached, okay? And what you would do is you would just put your stop loss below this breakout candle, okay? That's your invalidation. So if we close below my breakout candle, trades invalidated. Simple enough, right? Okay, I enter on this breakout or this retest somewhere in here. My stop loss goes below here, okay? 
and my target is uh, where that line was at, the measured distance here, bam. That's a great risk to reward. Okay, 3.7, that's a little, you know, a little bit higher than I'd like to see, but again, not terrible. I can go a little bit smaller, because um, I usually like one to two, so I'd like to see three to six here. For me personally, I would probably try to find a tighter stop loss, okay? Um, but again, that gets risky. If you're newer, you should definitely keep them at your invalidations, because this is technically invalidation level. Um, and so for this kind of risk reward, you just, you know, you wouldn't be able to go as big on something as if maybe this was a smaller breakout candle. Okay. Like, let's say this candle was a little bit smaller and it breaks out here, retest lower, then you can put your stop loss tighter. Right. So on these breakouts of patterns like this, it's basically your stops going to be below the big breakout. That's how I do it, um, is below those breakout candles again here. Where's my invalidation on this? Look at this. This is a trend reversal candle, right? My invalidation is above that line. All right, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is also, we kind of talked about, um, this is kind of a trend reversal candle, halfway a doji, but it's still a trend reversal candle. Um, we talked about this, look. Yes, it wicked above, but it did not close above that level. No invalidation on this short idea, and this short would have played out well if you were shorting this rejection or you know reversal candle. Um, so let's say we have an inverse head and shoulders. Okay, so left shoulder, head, right shoulder, okay, you play that neckline, and when that neckline breaks out, all right, that's where you're going to look for entry. Now, technical invalidation is below the right shoulder, okay? I usually like to play um, a little bit higher up, either if it's like on a big breakout candle or something, like if the candle, if the base of this breakout candle, like I just showed you, starts here. Okay, and then that candle breaks up. Then I usually like to do the base of that candle because if the base of that candle um, breaks below, then usually you go back pretty low anyway and get a, some sort of fake out and then you have to get in on another retest, right? So again, target for head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders is like this. So if I go below that breakout candle, which happens to be right here in this scenario, then bam, I'm getting like a 2% risk to a 17% reward. If I'm going below the right shoulder, I still have a great risk to reward, um, smaller position size. And a lot of times, a lot of you are gonna get stopped out on like wicks and things here. Um, so maybe it's best just to play smaller positions. And over time, if you're playing your stop losses at invalidations, below invalidation for long, above invalidation for short, over time, you're gonna make a lot more money even if you're using smaller position sizes because you're getting stopped out less. And that's kind of the key here is you want to get stopped out less. I don't care how much money I make on a trade. It's more like how much I'm losing, how much I'm risking. And if I'm risking a lot and getting stopped out a lot, I'm going to be losing a lot of money. If I'm risking a little and getting stopped out a lot, <clears throat> those losses can still add up to be a lot of money. Now, if I'm risking a little and not getting stopped out very often, I'm making money, and the more money I'm making, the more I can compound it, and the bigger positions I can take there on in the future if I'm compounding an account. And what I mean by that is, let's just say you're risking 1% to 2% on your account at all times, and you start with a... Man, this video is awesome, you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, make sure you, know, you retweet it on Twitter if you don't mind. Help get share this out. Uh, you know, leave me a comment on YouTube, subscribe to me on YouTube, give me $500 for making this video for you. You can send it to my Bitcoin address. I'm obviously kidding about that last part, you guys. Uh, but anyway, all right. So the key here is like, let's say I'm doing 10, let's say I have a $10,000 account. Okay. I shouldn't be risk. Like, I don't want to risk a thousand dollars a trade. There's, there's no reason to. Okay. Now there's technicalities here. We'll get into one little technicality. All right. Let's say like your, your margin account should be less. Okay, then your spot account. So let's say somebody has like a $500,000 spot account and they throw $10,000 in a margin account and they're using that $10,000 as full risk rather than putting like a $50,000 in there, all right, or something. If they're just using, if you have, if you only have $20,000 total to use for the markets in crypto, you shouldn't be risking 10%, you know, 10 of your margin account, which is $10,000, all right? Now, if you have $500,000 in a spot account to trade with, and you're risking a thousand dollars 
on a $10,000 leverage account, that might be okay for that situation. But for this situation, let's just say this is, you should never have all of your funds on one on a leverage exchange, but let's just say this is all the funds I have in crypto. $10,000, that's it. I'm gonna try my leverage out, blah, blah. I should only be risking $200-ish max on any trade, okay? There's no reason to risk more. You take two or three losses in a row, which will happen. Been plenty of times where I go on losing streaks, okay? That will happen. Um, and it's just hard to dig out of that hole. So if you're risking small amounts over time, if you have a good strategy or you understand how to trade, you're likely going to be a lot better off than if you're risking large amounts, okay? Of percent, uh, large percentages of your portfolio. So let's say I risk 10,000. It takes me six months, okay? to get up to, uh, you know, 10,000, I'm risking $200 a position. And let's say I'm making like 400 or $500 a position, something like that, which would be like a two to one risk to reward, right? Well, it takes me six months to get up to 20,000 to double it. That's fine, I'm up at $20,000 now. Now I can risk $400 a trade, right? $400 risk, but now I'm making, you know, $800 per win, all right? So now, it took me six months to get to 20K. Well, guess what? It only took me two and a half months to get to 30K. So first 10,000 took me six months, two and a half months, now I'm at 30K, all right? And I'm using strict risk management, only one to 2% of my account each time, all right? Um, and now I'm at 30K, and you, it's just gonna start compounding. And now, you know, a $200 loss at first was a lot, but now I can risk $600 to trade because that's still, you know, 2% of my account. So you're going to start, like, once your accounts get bigger, you're going to start realizing, like, whoa, like, this used to be a lot for my risk. Like, I this this used to be a large amount that I would never want to lose, and now it's like, if I lose this, it's whatever, because I've my account's so, so much bigger now, I can afford these losses, these small losses now, or these same percentage size losses, and there's no change to your strategy. You're doing the same thing that you started with at $10,000, at $20,000, at $30,000, at $100,000, all right? And at some point, honestly, if your account just goes parabolic and just grows to unreasonable amounts, it's not financial advice, but my idea or recommendation or what I would say to somebody asking me if I had to look in the mirror and tell myself what I would do is I would take some profit out of there, right? Like, and I've done that, and I will continue to do that always. Um, it's just, it's just a good way for me to mentally you feel accomplished and there's just good mental things that can come out of that and it takes some pressure off and yada yada. So anyway, you guys, it's a very long video. I don't usually like to make my videos this long for this series, but I really want to touch on that. I really want you guys to understand in validations for um, where your stop losses go. So make sure your stop losses are going at invalid whoa look whoa all right um you guys didn't look at the chart anymore you want to look at me you came here for this you didn't come here for the charts i know what you guys are here for um anyway uh invalidation is key you guys make sure you're putting your stop losses above invalidation make sure the closer you are to and the closer you are to invalidation you can use larger position size further away you are from invalidation your position size should get smaller and you should be looking for patterns or familiar candlesticks, chart patterns, or setups, something that you can familiarize with and have a clear invalidation level. If you don't have a clear invalidation level, then you don't know where to put your stop loss at and you're guessing. And when I don't have a clear invalidation level, I can't put a full size position in there because I don't know where, like, I'm going to get stopped out more than not because I don't know where price is gonna like i don't know where the invalidation's at so i don't know how to gauge where i should put my stop loss right so be smart you don't gotta go all in big on every trade right um slow and steady i can't tell you how fast you start to realize your account compounding once it starts really growing like it's insane you guys like really insane how if you just really try to compound it's gonna suck at first but it's like kind of like going to the gym like you know you work out for like three or four weeks or a month like you know three or four weeks or a month yeah that's not the same thing 
Um, you work out for three or four weeks or a couple months, and you're like, why am I going? This is not doing anything. I don't notice any changes. But then all of a sudden, you're like, whoa. I kind of got some abs coming in, right? Or, you know, you're, you're uh, well, you know, you guys have girlfriends, but, uh, you know, your hypothetical, your metaverse girlfriend goes, oh, look, uh, your shoulders are looking a little toned there, guy. Um, so you start to notice it. You're like, wow, this is actually rewarding. Now I'm going to keep doing this. And then you're like, oh, man, like, you know, everything just starts happening faster. You're like, wow, my abs are really looking good now. And that took half as long as it did to even start seeing results, right? So... At first, it's grueling. You got to get in the habits. Habits are hard to build. Um, they take the longest to build, but once you're in a good habit, they will carry over, and you're just going to see your account start to go parabolic eventually. I promise you, it will not maybe not parabolic, but just the amount of money you're going to start making is going to be like you're going to be like, wow, six months ago, I would have this would have been my whole account loss. You know, like you're going to be like, once you get your account to 50k, you're risking you can risk a thousand dollars. Uh, a trade now and you're like damn that would have been 10 percent of my original account value and now that's only one to two that's only two percent and it's within good risk management and now your wins are going to be even bigger and you're just going to be mind blown all right so thanks for joining me you guys want to get out this quick sunday night video this might be the first ever sunday night video i've recorded but i thought it was really important wanted to get it out to you guys Please smash the subscribe on my YouTube. Please, you know, comment down on my YouTube if you like this. Um, retweet it on Twitter for me. Help me uh, grow my YouTube. I really appreciate it. I'm really trying to get my education out to as many people as possible. Thank you, Prime XBT, for sponsoring this awesome series. And that's all I got for you guys. So I'll catch you next time. Peace.